Huh. Well, good morning. And good morning to those of you who are uh, joining us online or in the fellowship hall. Great to have you with us. Clearly, you have remembered that uh, today we start our summer schedule, and uh, we will continue the schedule through August, perhaps even into a bit of uh, September. I invite you to send the blue friendship books down. Put your name, other information there, and then send them to the center, if you would. Ah, where? Andrew, you're right there. Andrew, our uh, youth and family minister, has a number of things. First of all, good morning. Good morning. Everybody nice and dry? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to remind you of some things coming up. First of all, we were going to have a youth kickoff event today, but a number of families were gone. And it's probably good because it's raining. We couldn't play volleyball or anything like that. But we have rescheduled that for next uh, Sunday at 4.30. Um, in line with the orientation for the VBS volunteers. So just all middle school, high school youth and parents are invited to that. Uh, the big thing, of course, coming up is Vacation Bible School, June 12th through Friday, June 16th. So on this side of your insert, it has all of the information about that. But the big thing that I want to highlight is we still need a lot of help. So they are uh, sign-up sheets in the, what do we call it, the narthex? Uh, yeah. Yeah. The narthex. Yeah, narthex. That, that yes. room out there. That room out there. Yeah. <laughs> so if you are able to help us, we would really appreciate it. We have needs for people to be here. We have needs for people to donate food for uh, the various camp activities, VBS activities, and we would really appreciate that. Uh, and then also, finally, I just wanted to mention again to the young adults that we are having a dinner on Thursday, this Thursday, the 8th. So I hope you can be there at the Gold Home. Oh. Thank you. I have it in my hand. I know you. The other really big thing that we need your help is we want to do VBS and we want to do it for our kids, but we really want to do it for any kid that is in our community or friends or family. So there's a number of these on the back table. I would encourage you to grab a couple and invite somebody this week. So if, whether that's a family member, uh, whether that's a neighbor, somebody that you know, please make sure to invite. It's a great opportunity. Uh, there will be many kids um, here, and they'll have an opportunity to learn more about Jesus. So uh, please do that today, okay? Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Yeah, clearly, uh, Vacation Bible School, week-long event, uh, big thing. So thank you very much for your participation in that. Notice also a number of groups coming uh, happening this week. Uh, women's Bible study, mom's group, everyone's Bible study, <clears throat> uh, the college uh, young adult barbecue, and then the shredding event all this week. And so uh, try to keep them separate. Don't bring your shredding event to the mom's group. <laughs> also toward the bottom, uh, our playground update. Uh, the final tally is in on the yard sale that we had as a fundraiser, uh, over three and a half thousand dollars. So thank you very much for your donations, your work, uh, your finding great deals, and um, all your volunteering. The uh, playground you'll begin to see go up later this month, so keep your eyes open for that. I invite you to turn to your uh, contemporary worship book, black book. Turn to the front part called, uh, what is that called? Yeah, it's the setting for the brief order of confession. Please stand. We worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn back to your setting for booklet, page 3. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above 
And for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all those who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. The prayer of the day is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, dwelling in majesty and the mystery, renewing and fulfilling creation by your eternal spirit, and revealing your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Cleanse us from doubt and fear, and enable us to worship you with your Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, living and reigning, now and forever. Amen. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, I invite you to sit down and for the children to come forward. All right, kids. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, hi. How is everybody this morning? Good. Good? It's good to see you. So it is Holy Trinity Sunday, so I really want to talk a little bit about the Trinity. Does anybody here can explain the Trinity to me? It's kind of, it's, it's kind of confusing sometimes. You're like, uh, there's God the Father, there's God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I want to do a little illustration. A lot of, one way we can understand is the relationships in the Trinity. So I am a father. I have three of my kids here, so my relationship to these three is I am their father. Okay, I actually have some, we have some family visiting in town because we have some birthdays. Sitting over there, if you could raise your hand if you're okay with that, is my mother-in-law and grandmother-in-law. So to them, I'm a son or a grandson. And then to you and me, we have a different relationship, right? So who am I to you? Just some Andrew guy. No, Mr. <laughs> you can call me Andrew. That's okay. So we all have, that's different. I'm the same person, right? But I have a different relationship with different people. And it's kind of the same with God. There's three persons in one. We have God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we could go more into that. Um, but the really cool thing is, because God sent His Son Jesus, we can have a relationship with each member of the Trinity. It's kind of like if we were sitting here in a circle and we had three people, and it was God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And not only that, that's kind of interesting, but they invited us to come and have friendship and fellowship with us. Isn't that amazing? That's really cool. So today on Holy Trinity Sunday, I want you to, to remember and be thankful for the invitation that God gives us to, be, to have a relationship with each member of the Trinity. We're also going to learn some more about the Great Commission today, which is one of my favorites. Can you pray with me? All right. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your son Jesus so that we can have a relationship with you. We thank you also for sending the Holy Spirit who can live within us and gives us the ability to share about Jesus to others. Thank you most of all for your love for us and for these kids. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Great job, guys. Let's go. Thank you. Is chapter 1. I think you know it. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another and live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Here ends the reading. according to St. Matthew, chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God. Please be seated. Today we hear the Great Commission. What was it? Did you hear it? Go make disciples. It's the last thing that Jesus says. It's his farewell address. It's his final instruction. It's our purpose. Go make disciples. What's the context? It's at the very end of Matthew's Gospel. And it's reflected in your bulletin cover. It's Easter morning. The women have gone to the tomb. They've found it empty. The angels have made an announcement to them. And we see those words here. The angels say to the women, I know who you're looking for, Jesus who is crucified. He isn't here. He's been raised from the dead, just like he said. And then they add, but go quickly, tell the disciples that he's raised from the dead and is going ahead of you to where? Galilee. There you will see him. And then we come to our text, which is just a little bit later in Matthew's Gospel. The disciples did go to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus directed them, and they saw him and what the disciples do. They worshipped him. Was that all that they did? Yeah, and the Greek here is not real clear. It can be translated, and some doubted, or it can say they worshipped him, and they doubted. Isn't that great news? That the disciples, often which we sort of raise up and go, wow, well, gosh, they got to see Jesus, they got to be with Jesus, they followed him, they heard him, they saw what he did. If I were one of those, I would believe much more strongly. And then we hear, even at this point, they are worshiping as well as doubting. You see, doubt is a part of faith. It's like any relationship, it's ups 
and balance. And so if you find yourself doubting, don't fret. It's a part of faith. But then what? They see Jesus, they worship, they doubt, but then he speaks. And he gives to them what we now call the Great Commission. Go into the world and make disciples of all nations. It's their commission. It's their joint mission, literally. It's the very thing that Jesus wants us to do. Our main purpose, go and make disciples. With your lives, with what you do, with what you say, point to him that others may know him. That they may also follow Jesus. What I find interesting in that brief text at the very end of Matthew's Gospel is that there are four alls. A-L-L. -L, all. Go make disciples to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. Oh, and by the way, all authority has been given to me, and I am with you. You are listening. So, Let's start, we'll, we'll, we won't put them exactly in order. I'll start with the Great Commission. Go make disciples of all nations. First of all, what's a disciple? Anybody? A follower. Someone who follows someone. So you need to come to know them, come to trust them, come to believe what they say, believe who they are. Otherwise, why would you follow them? A disciple is like a student of a teacher. They learn. Not only what the teacher says, but who the teacher is. And so the first disciples are ones that spent time with Jesus, came to know him, then came to trust him and follow him. That's what we are called to do and also to invite others into the same. Jesus calls us to follow him and be his disciple but also to invite others to be his disciple too. Who can be a disciple? People who are at least this tall? <laughs> at least this strong? People who live around here, who talk our language? People who have had an education? People who know the Bible? What are the qualifications for being a disciple? What do you think? Not really any except one. Do you know what it is? To being willing to come to know and trust and follow Jesus. And so he says, go make disciples of all nations. Doesn't matter what people look like or what they sound like or where they've been. It doesn't even matter what kind of life they've lived. Whether it's helpful or unhelpful, whether they feel good about it or not. The door is open. Look over here. We heard it a bit earlier. I am the light of the world. You heard in creation, God spoke, said, let there be light, and there was. Jesus says, I am the light. When we're in darkness, it's helpful to know that there is a light. So, the one, the first, all that we'll look at is actually the Great Commission itself. Go make disciples of all nations. Point to Jesus. See what people do. Then he goes into a little more detail. Teaching them to observe what? All that I have commanded you. So when I think of commands, first of all I think of dogs. Sit, stand, roll over. People are a little different. As kids, we have commands. Make your, clean your, mind your. <laughs> I'm getting cues here. Brush your, yeah. Wash your, yeah. Be nice to your, <laughs> brothers and right. Right, brothers and sisters. Um, and we grow up as biblical people with uh, a number of commands. How many? 
And the first three have to do with our relationship with and the second seven have a relationship with people, others. Jesus, uh, especially to the rich man, rich ruler, when the rich ruler said, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, well, you know the Ten Commandments. And depending on the gospel, either Jesus or the man kind of rolls through them. But Jesus boils the Ten Commandments down to two. Remember what they are? Love God love neighbor. And it really covers all of life. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. How are you doing on that? Yeah, I stumble and fall also. But that's the goal. That's what we're made for. Love the Lord your God with your whole being. With everything that you see and do and say and hear. Because he is your life. He's the one who gave you your life. It is to him that you are going, and he is the one that will fill you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, might. Not for his sake, but for yours. And then secondly, love your, love your neighbor as? Not more than, not less than, but as you love yourself, which then you would think, first of all, you need to do what? Love yourself. And sometimes we struggle with that. And that's why the first part is so helpful. When we come to know and trust and love the Lord, we become, we begin to realize that we are His children. And that He loves us with a love that doesn't quit. That love is transforming. It makes us new. And in fact, it makes us the people He knew, he knew we always were but maybe we didn't. Teaching them to observe or follow or keep all that I have commanded you. Love God. Love your neighbor. One could put it another way. Make disciples of all nations, teaching them all that I've commanded you, if we live a life that wouldn't make sense unless Jesus were Lord, others will notice our attitude, our actions, our care, our awareness of them, and they'll begin to ask questions. Make disciples of all nations, that's the first all. It's not an exclusive group. The door is open. All are invited to know and to follow. Teaching them to observe all that I've commanded. The first part is the great commission. The second part is the great command. They go together. Now one could say, well, that's a high order. I'm not sure how well I can do that. Not a salesman. I'm not really someone who can convince people. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I'm a bit of a coward. I'm not sure how well I can respond to Jesus' call. The third all um, actually helps us out. In order of the reading, it's the first. Jesus starts out this whole part saying, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Authority is the right or ability to accomplish something. It's the capability to do something. The authority. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, God, by definition, has authority. We heard in the first lesson, God said, let there be light. What happened? There was a very large switch. <laughs> Boom. And Jesus claims that same authority when he says, I am the light of the world. Wherever there is darkness, wherever there is hopelessness or pain, 
Whether, wherever there is conflict or uh, things are not going well, Jesus is present and available. Jesus claims the same authority as God. I am the light of the world. All authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. C.S. Lewis, in response to that, says there's re three reactions or three possibilities. Who is Jesus? When he says, all authority has been given to me. I am the light of the world. Making himself equal with God. Three possibilities. One, he's lying. In other words, he knows he's not, but he wants you to think he is, and therefore he is a liar. Second possibility is he is not God, but he thinks he is, and therefore he's crazy, or beginning with an L, he's a, a lunatic. So if Jesus isn't what he says he is, he's either a liar who knows he's lying, or he's a lunatic and doesn't know. Do you know what the third possibility is? That it's true. And if it's true that he has all authority, then he, in fact, is Lord. He's either a liar or a lunatic or Lord. Check him out. Read what he says. See what you think. Is he a lunatic? Is he a liar? Or is he Lord? You look at his ministry. When someone is blind, Jesus speaks, and what happens? The person receives their sight. The deaf hear, the lame walk. As Jesus reaches out to touch one who is sick, they are restored. And next week, we will hear of a woman who is restored after suffering for 12 years, and a little girl, 12 years old, who has just died, who he gives life to. That is authority. If we are concerned that we don't have what it takes to respond to Jesus' commission, it's helpful to remember <clears throat> that he's the one with the authority. <clears throat> the ability, the capability to do what needs to be done. There's a lot that we can't do. There's a lot that we can't make happen, but he can. In relationships, if something is stressed, there's only so far we can go. There's only so many apologies we can make. There's only so many phone calls we can make. And if the person has blocked us, we can't go any further. But he can. It's happened a number of times. <clears throat> When someone has been on my call list, oh yeah, I need to contact, I need to talk to so-and-so. One of you. And life happens, and the weeks go by, and I realize, ah, I still haven't called them. And so maybe it's four weeks have gone by, and I go, it's this week, I'm going to call this person, and sure enough, I write it down, I say, it's, it's got to be this week, and so I call. When the person answers, and we begin to talk, Often the interesting thing is that the person says, wow, this is really interesting. I was praying, I was really needing to talk to you, and you called exactly today. And I say, well, please know, I, you've been on my list for a month, <laughs> and I'm really sorry that I'm late. And we both find out I wasn't. It was just the right time. The opposite happens, too. Sometimes I am late. But God can do things that we cannot do. To put people together in the right place at the right time. <clears throat> Whether it is you happening to see somebody that you haven't seen for years, and they just needed that encouragement from you. Or whether it's running into somebody who's a stranger and all of a sudden you begin to connect in ways that only the Lord 
could put together. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth have been given to me. The next word actually is go what? Therefore. Because he has all authority, therefore go. It's not on your authority. It's not on your strength. It's not on because you're such a great person. It's not because you have it all together. It's because of him and his goodness that we go. And then watch what he does. Finally, the fourth all. When we feel alone or weak, and I know you've been there, unsure that we're up to the task, whatever the task may be. When we don't know the next step, we don't know if we can do what's helpful. Jesus says, go and make disciples, and I'm going, I'm not even sure I'm a great disciple. It's important and helpful to hear his promise. Do you remember what it is? I am with you always. Literally, he says, I am with you all days to the end of the age. Every moment, every situation, every place, every minute, whether we sense his presence or not, whether we are frustrated or frightened or whether we are distanced from him, he is there at every moment with us. No matter what we're going to do, no matter what the need is of the other. I am with you always. You do not bear your load alone. Jesus, by the way, never calls us to do something that he has not already prepared us to do. He does not manipulate. He does not try to figure out some crazy situation. I am with you always to give you exactly what you need. The four alls. We ordered them. The Great Commission. Go, therefore, make disciples of how many nations? All nations. Baptizing them in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. Love God. Love your neighbor. <coughs> On the basis of the fact that he is saying, how much authority has been given to me? All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. By the way, that's why we confess in the Lord's Prayer, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. And where is he seated? That is not a location. Jesus is not limited up there somewhere. But the right hand of God is the position of what? Authority. Whenever we confess the Apostles' Creed, it's a reminder that Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. And when you pray, remember that. It's not your great words. It's not your fervency. It's not how many people are praying. It's because He is Lord, that things would happen. All nations, all commands, all authority, and then I am with you always. If this is true, then how will you live? How about inviting him to take your life and make use of you. Our hymn, the words are in your bulletin. Please stand.
to turn back to your setting for booklet, page 7. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, we confess our faith. And remember that line about seated at the right hand of the Father. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you call us to make disciples of all nations. Seems like a pretty big order. And for most of us, it seems like something that is not within our wheelhouse. We're struggling enough the way it is, and we have enough doubts sometimes to fill a wheelbarrow. Besides, we don't know the Bible that well, and, well, we can be kind of shy. But Lord, you are the one that makes things happen. You chose 12 disciples who didn't know their right hand from their left, who weren't biblically educated, who often doubted not only you, but themselves. And in a few years, you trained them to become 
your followers and your witnesses. So Lord, take us with our failures and our foibles, with our fears, our doubts, with our two left thumbs, sometimes with our lack of tact, take us and shape us and mold us and use us for you and for the sake of others. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you have an amazing way to take what is broken and make it whole. To take what's going in one direction and turn it around to go in a direction that provides life and healing and hope. You have an amazing way of lowering the walls that we build so that we might know and trust you. You are not only one who points to life. You are life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this broken world in so many ways. Conflict, wars, hunger, homelessness. We pray for families, for marriages, for nations that your touch, your presence, your breath can make us whole. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, as you have filled and sent Didi and Serafina, your missionaries, to the Congo, so do the same for us. Whether it's in the grocery store, work, school, our neighborhood, or our family. Let us reflect your light and your love in all that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in our midst, for Kelly and Sue, Joe, Liz, Sherry, Electa, Dorothy, Kathy, John and Matthew, Don and Dave, Tom, Dwayne, and those we mention silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace with one another.
the offering prayer is printed in your bulletin. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, our power, our time, and our pleasure. Signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have life eternal. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for those in Christ Jesus. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, remembering me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this, remembering me. We pray the Lord's Prayer as printed in your book. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for you. And did you notice he is the light? <laughs> As you come to the table, I invite you to... Ah! You will receive the bread in the center. Ah, is that right? Yes, yeah, you receive the bread in the center. Our assisting ministers will help you with your wine. When you're finished, place your empty glass in the basket and return to your place. Please be seated. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. We pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.